Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to this tutorial. In my recent tutorials that I have created, I have been getting questions about Clavin, you did not post the HTML that was converted to PDF. Clavin, how did you create the HTML? Clavin, you always say and you always write that when it comes to HTML, the sky is the limit. But how do I go ahead and use this powerful language in conjunction with my Power App? In this particular tutorial, I'm going to answer these questions. We are going to create some HTML, sprinkle it with CSS magic, include few complex controls as well as simple controls in that HTML and all that will be done in Power App. So without wasting any further time, let's get into the demo. For this demo, I'm going to add a button and I'm going to add an HTML text control. So our HTML text control is used to render the HTML. As of now, you see that there is some basic HTML in here, but I will get rid of it for now. And then I'll go to my button and I'll set a variable HTML content to some HTML text. If you're new to HTML, I would recommend that you start with an HTML tutorial. There are free tutorials out there. W3 schools provide a good free tutorial course. Go and look at the tutorial. It will really help you understand the basics. Now, if you look at this example, you have the HTML elements, right? So you can just copy this, take it and paste it here within double quotes, right? So let's go and try to render this HTML in my HTML text control. So I'll set the HTML text control to HTML content. If I click on this HTML, it tells me this is a heading and this is a paragraph. Awesome. So let's quickly review the HTML control or the HTML text in here. So we have an HTML tag. HTML has a closing. HTMLs have an opening and closing tags. They look very similar to XML. Then you have the head section. Within the head section, you have a title. But the real magic happens in the body. And whatever that you see rendered is actually rendered from the body. Like this is heading and this is a paragraph. Perfect, right? So let's go and add a label. And let's give this label some text. And I want to render this text as a heading. So firstly, whenever you're working with HTML, understand this. You need to be very careful with the opening and closing double quotes. So I'm going to add opening and closing double quotes like this. Now I want to insert my element or insert the label text between. So how do I do that? I will use the ampersand, ampersand, right? The error is still there. Between this particular element, I'm going to add label one dot text. And now the error has gone away. So if you want to insert text from a label or text from a text control in between a HTML code, you need to add double quotes and then an ampersand symbol. Similarly, you close it with a double with an ampersand symbol and a double quote. So let's see if our text actually goes ahead and updates. So perfect. It goes ahead and renders. This is a label. Now let's add another control. Let's add a text input. And the format is fine. Everything looks good, but I want to set it to multi-line text. Okay. I want to set multi-line text in this paragraph. So I already told you, so let's get to understand the basics. So what do I do? I add double quotes and then I use the ampersand symbol and an ampersand symbol. And between the ampersand symbol, I specify the name of my control that is text input one dot text. If I play the app and type in some random text and click on the button, it goes ahead and renders it in the HTML control. This is fine. These are all normal controls. Let's make it a little bit complicated, right? 
we also want to accommodate complex controls. So the first complex control that I'm going to add is a camera and my use case is to capture an image and render it in an HTML. So to do that, I need to add the image tag. So the syntax for the image tag would be IMG SRC is equals to your image and then a closing bracket. So this looks pretty straightforward, right? So let's go ahead and select an image. So I'll copy the image address and I'll paste it in between the double quotes. But now it's giving me an error. So the first important thing that you notice is the double quotes within a double quotes is a problem. So to get around this, always remember if you are using something within your HTML that needs double quotes, replace them with a single quotes. So in my case, I'm going to replace the image SRC and the link of my image with single quotes. Yes, my friends, I know that we are going to capture the image from the camera control, but let's understand the basics. So as I clicked on it, it has rendered the image with the text as well as the multi-line text input. So that being said, now I want to replace this image with an actual image. How do I do that? So to do that, I'll again use the same old trick. First, I'll go ahead and use a double quote, a double quote, an ampersand symbol and an ampersand symbol, and then add camera one or camera two dot photo. So now if I click on this app, I'll change this text to clay bin, capture an image, click on the button. And here you see that the camera control is also being rendered. But one thing out here, the image is too big. I want to resize the image a little bit small. How do I do that? So in HTML, there's a concept known as CSS. If you are new to CSS, again, I would recommend you go to W3 schools and take a quick tutorial on CSS. But the important thing to understand here, if you're going ahead and using CSS within the HTML for Power Apps, then you need to add inline CSS. So how do I add inline CSS? So to add an inline CSS, we need to add the style tag. So before I resize the image, let's try to do something very basic. Let's try to change the text color of a paragraph, right? So I'll type in style and then I can do a single quote, not a double quote, color red, color colon red, and then I can end it with a semicolon. Let's see if this works. So this particular text Clavin should now render in red. So here my friends, you see the CSS is being honored. Similarly, I can add a CSS even to the image. So to add the CSS to the image, again, the syntax would be the same. I'll say style width 200 px. I guess you guys out there have already noticed that I'm habitual to add double quotes, but be careful, you need to add single quotes instead of double quotes, right? So always take that into consideration. Colon, semicolon height, let's make it 200 px and then end with a semicolon. Let's see if this works, right? So click on the button and here my friends, you have the label you have the text with the CSS applied to it. That is, we applied the red color font and then we also resize the image. So this is awesome. So let's add another complex control, which is used in most of the apps. And that one is the pen input. So I'm going to add a pen input here. And now I want to capture this pen input and add it into this particular HTML. So I guess that should be easy, right? So I can just copy this line, paste it down here. Instead of camera, I want to add pen input one dot image. And I think that should be it. So do you agree? Any guesses? Will it work? Let's see. So again, I'll click a photograph. I'll scribble some text and click on the button. But here, I'm getting a blank photograph. I should actually have the scribbled text. So what's going wrong? So first things first, to debug, I'm going to use text labels, right? 
So I'll add two text labels to understand the difference between a camera control and a pen input control. So let me add camera two dot photo to this particular label. And if you see, it renders a base 64 bit string. And I'll add pen input one dot image into this particular control. So there is a clear difference. This renders a base 64 and this renders a apris URL, right? So the requirement out here would be to convert this URL or the blob manager URL into a base 64 bit string. And how do we do that? So let's address that particular problem. But before that, let me get rid of the labels. Label one, delete, label two, delete. So next, I'm going to click on the button and before actually setting the HTML, I will try to set a formula out here. So set pen image and I'm going to use the JSON function. So JSON and I'm going to pass it the data. So what is the data in our case? It's going to be pen input one dot image. And what do I want to do with this data? I want to convert it into binary. So I'll say include binary data, right? And next I can add this particular pen image out here. So there is an error. Why is there an error in this particular scenario? Because there's a syntax error. I need to close the set function out here. As soon as I close it, this resolves correctly. So that being said, let's go and try this out. So I'll play it. I'll just click on the button, but still there is no image. But however, there shows a broken image. So what does this mean? That means that something is wrong with the content. So again, the same old trick. Let's add text labels. And let's first set this text label to camera dot photo. So this shows me a base 64 bit string. Let me add another label. And this time I'm going to add the pen image variable that I have created. So pen image. So what is the difference between the two? Even this is a base 64 and even this is a base 64. But if you're looking closely at the text input out here, you see that this particular base64 data doesn't have a double quote. However, the pen image has a double quote. Why is that? So we are going ahead and setting the binary data to the pen image variable. And that is the reason why it is considered like a string. So what is the solution? Let's quickly click on the button and let's understand this. We have a double quote. That means we need to get rid of this single quote, right? And now if I play this app and if I click on the button here, my friends, you have the signature as well. At this point of time, you can actually take this particular HTML, save it in your SharePoint and convert this HTML into a PDF. And that's Pretty much it for today. I hope this particular session or this particular tutorial was informative. Thank you for your time. Have a great day and bye-bye.